Finally, after 16 years and thousands of hours of hard work, we have finally made it to 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be going over a timeline of my YouTube journey up to this point in time and what this channel's future is going to look like. Before we get into that, I just want to say thank you to all of you who have subscribed to me on YouTube. We couldn't have gotten this channel to 500 subscribers without each and every one of you. History lesson. I started my YouTube venture in 2006 learning visual effects, creating short, goofy live action video, VFX, and animation. I was in inspired by other YouTubers who made it, like Smosh, Film Cow, the guys who made Charlie the Unicorn. They were both big inspirations for me. I knew I wanted to do YouTube as a career path as it had many things that enticed me more than any other potential career path had at that time. Unfortunately, making a career out of YouTube is a bit harder than I anticipated. And I was already anticipating it to be pretty tough. Back when I started YouTube in 2006, I was fully ready for it to take 10 plus years to get anywhere, as I wanted to give myself ample time to fulfill my lifelong dream of the YouTube career. Alas, we are now 16 years into the future and I have not seen a single penny from making the YouTube videos I love to make. Money isn't everything, but my goal was to have a career I am passionate about. Too many times I see what feels like 99% of people I know do not enjoy their jobs. I didn't want to be stuck in that sad but real situation many people find themselves in. After creating these fun and goofy skits on my other channel, I eventually opened another channel focusing on making drum covers. That channel was Drum and Steve, which I would do metal covers of heavy metal bands like Lamb of God, Death Clock, Korn, System of a Down, Static X, Devil Driver stuff I grew up with. Lots of metal was to be had on Drum and Steve. Some of those videos even reached over 150,000 views. Wow. Then one day, YouTube decided to ban Drum and Steve. I appealed and fought for it, but trying to reach a real person at Google is near impossible. I decided to let Drum and Steve float into the abyss for eternity and move on to other things. As covering other people's music one-to-one -one isn't my main passion anyways, it was more of a channel to see the change in my drumming progress over the years. I've also tried making Let's Play channels where I would play various video games, but there were two problems with that avenue. One, I felt like I had to force reactions to be much more exaggerated to stand out. And the bigger problem was playing other people's games didn't challenge me creatively enough. I need to be creating stuff. As time went on, I was inspired by other musical YouTubers such as Rob Scallon, Stevie T, Jared Dines, just to name a few. I noticed the trend of people making their channels just their name, especially the music related channels. To me, this felt like I didn't have to make my channel so niche because my goal is to have creative freedom while making a career out of it, which eventually led to the creation of this channel, the Steven DeLeo channel. At first, the focus for this channel was creating meme metal. I think it's hilarious to turn lighthearted things that typically wouldn't be associated with metal turning into metal. For example, Baby Shark Metal, Owen Wilson Wow Metal, Aladdin's Prince Ali. I also spent a good time creating my own personal virtual stage I could perform with the other me's using green screen technology. Then there are the metal nursery rhymes. My metal cover of Itsy Bitsy Spider is my most viewed video on this channel with over 41,000 views. And that video alone has brought in 100 of you beautiful subscribers. So I decided to double down on children's music turned metal as that was my biggest point of success. Unfortunately, no other children metal song have come close to the Itsy Bitsy Spider. Amidst all these projects, I would create and release completely original music. Again, not many views were gained by these kinds of videos. So I thought it was time to get the community involved. So I started Trance Tuesday where I would take people's suggestion and turn it into a silly trance song along with the full 3D animation. Surely people will be on board to get their suggestions turned into full music videos, right? There were very few people who suggested songs for Trance Tuesday. Most of them were actually friends in real life. Thanks guys, glad you have my back. But looking at those video stats a year later, most of those Trance Tuesday videos sit around 20 to 30 views. Creating a full song and 3D animation each week was taking pretty much all my time with little to no return. I feel a bit negative talking about all these failed projects, 
But that's the life of an entrepreneur because they aren't really failed projects. Each project I make, I set out to learn something new and hone in on increasing my digital creating skills. Next, we have the Puppet Saga, where the plan was to integrate my sock puppet characters into music videos and story. This fits into the category of creating original music, which creatively feels the best to me. However, people simply don't know about these characters. People don't know about me? What's up with that? So if I make a video saying, Mischievous Matthew lost all his money. What do you mean I lost all my money? Nice clickbaity title. There's a low chance of someone clicking on that video simply because they don't know who Mischievous Matthew is. <laughs> Better start working on making us well known, buddy. As I haven't built too much recognition for these characters yet. Not to mention a lot of people are just off put by puppets. I know because I too was one of these people. What? Who doesn't like puppets? Especially puppets that are built with such high quality materials. I also started creating vlog type videos, trying to encourage people to pursue their creative dreams, talking about some of my experiences so people can know what to look for and what to avoid. I didn't receive much feedback on the vlog videos and even this video itself is vloggy by nature. Around a year ago, I heavily got into game development as that's been something I've been wanting to get into for years, but I've always been afraid or gave up the previous times I tried to learn it. The idea of making games really grabs me due to the interactive nature. Being able to have people play through something and give a unique experience that isn't just sitting and watching, but actually being part of it in an interactive way Sounds awesome. Not to mention making games requires all the stuff I'm already into. 3D art, animation, music, and programming logic in games has actually been pretty fun for me lately. Now this brings us to right now and what the future of the channel is going to look like. At this point in time, I have very little interest in creating content that doesn't also have a chance to bring in some sort of cash flow or creating a more recognizable brand. For example, the nursery rhymes are great because they are public domain, so I can take those metal covers I did put them on Spotify, and they are, you should go check them out. However, songs that are copyrighted, like Baby Shark, Aladdin's Prince Ali, actually costs me money to put them on Spotify. So I'm actually cool with doing covers of songs that are in public domain, because while I'm not seeing a cent from YouTube, I could still get a few pennies from Spotify. However, my main focus at the moment is gonna be in game development and my puppets along with some other non-YouTube related online freelance work, which means I may be uploading less. My plan is to keep upping my game development skills, integrate my puppet characters into games I create so I can build recognition with these characters while making sales with these games. I'm not saying I'm not gonna get the urge to create the random YouTube video, but for now my mindset has changed into if there isn't some sort of financial gain in some shape or form, it's not really worth doing, which really sucks to feel that way because money is stupid but we live in a stupid world where money makes the world move. And after 16 years of non-financial movement from my creative dreams, enough is enough. I go through periods of time where I will try to appease the algorithm by uploading twice a week, which eventually turns into once a week. Then I'll get burnt out from not seeing any sort of tangible success from whatever it is I've been focusing my creative efforts into making and might even take a break from uploading. So that's pretty much the gist of it. I truly do appreciate all of you 500 subscribers. Without you guys, I might have stopped a long time ago. And if you made it this far, I applaud you for listening to my story. Comment. The llamas are coming. I don't know exactly what this channel's content is gonna look like, but I do wanna be somewhat apparent of my game plan for this channel's future. Currently, I am creating a Christmas-themed video game for PC, which is a four-player local co-op game where you play as a cat riding a sled, delivering presents to various houses in need of some magical spirit. It will be interesting to see what this channel evolves into. That's all I have for you today. I hope you all have a good day.